best of all worlds. It's uh, smaller, it's lighter, lower distortion, it has a low crossover, it's less expensive. I think it sounds better than any compression driver we've ever made. <laughs> Hey guys, we're back with a new video and I'm here with Bennett Prescott of BNC Group and he wants to share a brand new compression driver, but not just a new compression driver, but also a new way of manufacturing compression drivers. Yeah, it slices, it dices, it makes spaghetti. It's everything that you could possibly want. No, All right. Uh, yeah, we, we uh, the, the thing that, and we talked about this in the last time we chatted, the last time we, uh, we talked right after we acquired Eminence. And I said, hey, we got this new compression driver coming. I can't really talk about it yet, but uh, I think it's going to be really exciting. And it's, uh, I feel kind of, um, I guess, nerdy for being excited about something this, like, basic looking. But there is a ton going on inside this new series. Uh, and this is um, covered by a new patent we have on the HLX technology, which is integral to the phase plug which is mm. really critical part of how the sound gets off the diaphragm and to your ears without getting all messed up. <clears throat> uh, but this is the smaller one of a new series called the DH series. Um, and they are basically inside out compression drivers. Um, and there's two so, to begin with. Before, before you go too far, I just want to clarify what you're holding. This is it. It's the entire compression driver. Yeah. That's the, that's the, I'm being careful because I unscrewed it so I could show it to you, but that's the one inch throat and that's, that's the whole thing. The whole thing's less than two inches square. I'm used to compression drivers. Like I'm holding them in my hand like yeah. this, right? Like that, that's tiny. Yeah. And this is a 1.4 inch diaphragm. This is equivalent to our like uh, DE 111 or, uh, you know, I, I, not a, not exactly the smallest compression driver money can buy, but I mean, this is no the smallest compression driver money can buy. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, the, the goal was to get it this, this dimension down to get it less than two inches center to center so that, uh, you can pack a bunch of them in or you can, uh, have as small a, a weight penalty as possible, putting mm -hmm. it into a, a really small light cabinet without any performance penalty. And so that was the original goal. The original goal was, hey, can you make it this small without a performance penalty based upon a standard driver we make, which is the DE110, I think. Um, and it's it's the same diaphragm. The, the Here's the diaphragm. This is the diaphragm. It is exactly the same tool that forms this diaphragm as the, the diaphragm in the DE 110 or 111. I, I can't remember exactly which one it is. I think it's the 111. Um, and the the main difference is that we turned it inside out. So normally the energy comes off this concave side of the dome. And you can tell this is an engineering prototype. So it's got all sorts of, I stole this one. Um, <laughs> normally the energy comes off this side of the dome and then through a phase plug out to your ears. Um, but then you have to put the magnet structure uh, you know, on the back here and, uh, it goes outside the, uh, sorry, not on the back, you can put the magnet structure on this side, uh, outside the coil. And that makes, that's, that's what makes the compression driver big. So instead we said, Hey, what if we put the magnet structure, which is this part, this is the whole magnet. And oh, so wow. in the core here, there's a N52 grade Neo magnet, N52H, it's super high temperature. That's the magnetic gap and the coil sits right inside like that so the the whole magnetic structure fits inside the center of this if i can figure out how to put it back together uh there you go that's the whole magnetic structure with the coil and the dome but now the energy comes off this side instead and that lets you you the main advantage of this is uh besides the compactness is once you're getting the energy off this side instead of just the energy of the dome inside the voice coil, now you get the energy coming off the surround as well. And so you get more diaphragm area, but you're still paying all the same penalties in weight, magnetic flux, everything. So it's just free. It's like getting an 18 performance out of a 15, mm. but it's, it's still a 15. Like it's free. So it's, it's so, a really good performance advantage. Um, so is the compromise the low end then? No, the compromise isn't the low end. Uh, we designed it to go low 
uh, and this has a recommended crossover of one kilohertz, and the AES power is with a second order high pass at one kilohertz wow. uh, on a horn. But I mean, if you don't need max on output, you could go a little lower than that. Uh, I think the the bigger version, this is the the 350. There's the DH450. That one you could take down to 800 or so pretty pretty safely. So in, in any situation where you're not going to just beat the snot out of it, absolutely you can go you can go lower until you run out of excursion. It's just not much excursion. You can see, you know how much <laughs> surround area is available. There's not much. That's uh, impressive though that it's that small and go and can go so low because typically where you you think that you need a much bigger driver to be able to do that. Sure. I mean, it's, it's basically the same thing as in woofers where you have like uh, some people have a I'm like, on my desk. I have six inch studio monitors that go to 40 hertz and it's just this long excursion rubber surround six inch. Uh, but in a pro setting where you wanted more output, you would never do that. You'd have your six go to like I don't know, 120 hertz and then get into some other band pass. So it's the same thing with compression drivers. We, If we made it go to like two kilohertz, we could probably get a little more output out of it, but not. Not really, actually. We we found that that wasn't really true in this particular case. That's pretty awesome. And what's uh, the other part of the compression driver that you got in your hand? Oh, this part? The good yeah, part. part. The, the cool. good part. The good part, yes. Yeah. These are great leading questions. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so in a normal compression driver, because the energy is coming off this side of the dome, you need to... Uh, get it through a phase plug because the, the the dome is too big it's too acoustically large i like to say which man how do i put this thing back together i should stop taking this apart i got it <clears throat> the dome is too like at 20 kilohertz this is like i don't know three wavelengths so you can't just expose the dome to the air and mm. have it work uh and have good high frequency response um and also the critical part of the compression driver is the compression chamber, which is this very small cavity between the phase plug opening and the dome. When I put this together, there's like a millimeter airspace in between the dome and the this curved surface, the entrance mm. to the phase plug channels. And that is what makes compression drivers work. And uh, the reason it's so important is because this hard dome, when it's vibrating, is very inefficiently coupling to air because the air is really soft, right? I can move my hand through the air, but if I try to move my hand through this dome, it's going to stop. So the dome is really hard. The air is really soft. It's a bad uh, mechanical match between the two. So what the, the compression driver's primary trick is this tiny chamber, this one millimeter air gap between the, the dome and the phase plug. And that compresses the air. So it makes the air harder, really close to the dome. And then mm. as you get out towards the throat, it slowly lets the air get softer and softer and softer. So basically, it, it pretends that the air is like stiff right by the dome. And that lets the, the dome transmit the energy into the air really well. Uh, and then the phase plug manages the transition to the outside air slowly so that so that it can try and maintain that coupling as well as possible. And that's what gets the, the compression driver, its name, compression driver, and B, that like... 10 dB better efficiency right out the gate. It's just about trying to manage the impedance between the dome and the air better. Um, but that's that's a normal thing for all compression drivers. Uh, so that the trick with this one is it's a two path phase plug, which is to say for energy to get off the dome, it's got to go down one of these. I'm trying to make this clear, but it's kind of a small part It's got to go down one of these two paths. So the dome sits here and the energy goes out this path, the outer path, mm -hmm. or it goes down this central path. And mm. those two paths are designed so that they, they harvest the energy off the dome uh, so that it all comes out in time. And you don't have these errors from a large dome. So you can get good 20 kilohertz response as well as good one kilohertz response. But they have to be the same length. They have to be exactly the same length or else you get a delay and you get notches in the response. And the trick is in this one, there's not enough space in the middle path to, to put a bend to make them the same length and mm. use normal tooling. You could 3D print it, but if you use normal tooling, the tool won't come apart because it'll interfere with itself. So the DH series thing, the trick, is this center path. If I remove the little middle bit, it's twisted. Oh, so yeah. to get the, 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 the length in 3D, it twists the sound before it, it makes it out. 
And that is the innovation that lets us use normal tooling, so it's very inexpensive, super easy to do high volume, and gets the, the two pads in the phase plug to be equal length. Um, and that's that's the trick that makes it work. That's the part that we have uh, patent pending on, and that it, we're then applying to, this is the, the phase plug from the bigger one, the DH450, still two pads, but the center path is twisted. And that's the that's the technology. That's actually really smart. So that's kind of the innovation that separates this from other compression drivers. Now, the benefit, you said you can go low and you still get your real good high end. Is that right? Yeah, it's. I don't really get to say this very often, but this little DH350 and its bigger brother, the DH450, and anything else we build in the DH series, uh, it's like the best of all worlds. It's uh, smaller. It's lighter. Uh, it's lower distortion because we used a lower compression ratio, uh, mm. and especially it's lower intermodulation distortion, which is, I think, the kind you really hear. Um, it has a low crossover. You can go to at least 1K with it. Uh, it's less expensive. Um, did I miss anything? It's higher output. It's like 5 dB more output at a given distortion level at 1K than the driver that uses the same diaphragm, the DE111, the same diaphragm. <laughs> Is 5 dB less capable in a normal compression driver at 1K. That's unbelievable. So yeah, it's a it's a pretty big deal. I think I think you know the part that's really relevant. It's a part for pro audio, like everything we make. And so the goal was to provide some solutions to pro audio OEMs uh, in terms of compactness and cost, whatever. But the thing that I really like and is especially relevant to like the DIY market is that I think it sounds better than any compression driver we've ever made. Really? Even yeah, better got... than the uh, 100 that everyone always loves. What is it? The uh, DE150? Probably the 250. The yeah. I 250, sounds... yeah. The, you yes, know, the Rob... 250 sounds really nice at really low level. Like you put a volt or two into the DE250. It's a sweet sounding because it's a mylar diaphragm. Yeah. But once you get it hot, once you warm it up, it starts to get really, it has a character I really don't like. And it gets really mm. distorted at really... Um, pretty moderate levels. And this one does not have that problem. It's a different diaphragm material is most of the, the technology there. Um, you know, I once talked to another manufacturer of compression drivers, I'm not gonna say who, but they actually said that they used the DE250 as reference to see if it was good enough or not. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, if it's not, if it doesn't meet that, then we, we gotta scrap it, we gotta start over. Uh, yeah. And I thought that was kind of funny um, that they use that. This though, so this this will cross over low enough, but I look I noticed. Can you show that diaphragm one more time? Sure. I know something interesting about. No, I'm sorry, not the diaphragm. The um the phase. Yep, that. Yep. Turn it around just for a second. I, I lost noticed the middle piece. it's on the ground here somewhere. Oh, that's okay. I noticed that it's got an interesting way of connecting to a horn. Oh yeah, yeah. So. The problem is the standard bolt circle is like what three inches or two and a half inches. It's pretty pretty big, but the whole compression driver is less than two inches, so you can't use a standard bolt. So this is some I think I don't know it's like fifty one millimeters or something ridiculous. It's not a standard uh, hole distance Pattern. between these two holes, uh, yeah. and we don't have a horn that's that's uh, got holes for this. So yeah, you'll, you'll have to take a horn and, and drill some new holes in it, or um, maybe if uh, I get my way, we could make an adapter at some point in the future, or, or a horn that just takes this driver, like a nice 1K horn that takes this tiny driver. The horn's going to be like this, and the driver's like this. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? There are there are adapters. Like Eminence makes these adapters, which is part of the BNC group. Uh, this one is plastic. I know that on Parts Express they actually sell the aluminum ones. But I, I would imagine you could probably just screw some new holes into that. Yeah, if you got a if you got a drill press, you know, someone does, and you know, yeah, you choose either one. Yeah. I mean, I think the aluminum one tastes better. Um, tastes better. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. the plastic one doesn't you, taste very good. Yeah, I, I, you know what? That is one test I've never done. I, That's I how I do choose that. pro audio components. Mm, mm, yeah, mm. the cookie test, right? The yeah abs has that you know sort of sterile taste yeah you know what i i'm gonna have to probably agree with you but i'm i'm gonna just agree i'm just gonna take as a man who's eaten a lot of as two yeah. gentlemen who've eaten a lot of abs <laughs> uh, 
But I think that is true. That is going to be the one thing. But with the DIY crowd, that's one thing that we are really good at is creating adapters and things. Even 3D printing an adapter would not be that hard. Even if you had a design out that you just threw an STL on Thingiverse or something where someone could print out an adapter. The thing is, but you can buy adapters like these TPI adapters, which would fit most one inch horns. Since it's a one inch exit, that is kind of the one nice thing is there's a lot of horns that you could potentially get it to work with. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one of the advantages of these drivers is there's no expansion at the end, right? The, the phase plug is at the mounting plane. So a lot of the things that make a driver horn sensitive is that it's got the phase plug and then there's some expansion milled into the steel. And that's that's really the beginning of your horn. And so hmm. if your the horn you bolt on doesn't match that existing ramp, then uh, you can get a, an impedance mismatch and you can get a reflection. It can sound bad. Whereas this doesn't doesn't have that problem. You can use any horn with these. Uh, this like the the um, uh, DCX coaxial compression drivers. The, you know the face plugs right there. There's no expansion, so any horn it's going to be pretty friendly. But if you use an adapter like this, isn't this going to be the beginning of the horn now? That is true. That is true. Yeah. So that would actually be. But that'll be true with any any compression driver you put on that adapter, right? So hopefully that adapter. That's true. If you find that that adapter mates with your horn well, then you've solved half your problems. Yeah, that's, that's your a good audio point. problems. I don't mean your personal problems. That's a issue. <laughs> so the DH three fifty, DH four fifty. When can we see these actually on the shelves? Yeah, the three fifty. We're doing the you know multi hundred piece setting up our quality control run like now. Um, so let's say like uh, February, March, April, May, June, June, July, we should have some in the stock in, in New Jersey. Um, and then the 450 is probably going to be about four or five months after that. So let's say the, you know, early summer for the 350 and uh, mid Winter. fall for the 450. Okay. Interesting. Unless you email me and ask very nicely. <laughs> that can help. Well, you know, I obviously want some to check out on the channel. So, I definitely want to see some 350s on the channel sometime. Uh, 350, I think, would be more sense. So if you can get some in my hands at some point in time, I would love to show them off. Yeah, you want 8 ohms? Yeah, 8 ohm, yeah. All right. Yeah, write a letter to Santa. and I'll write a letter. All text. right. <laughs> I'll do that. Send it to me, though. Send is Santa's name Bennett? Okay, good. No, his name's no. Alessandro Pancani, but... <laughs> what? Send it to me. Okay, I'll send it to you. Little known fact. No, listen to it, please, and tell me what you think, because that's, uh, you know, it's sort of a different direction for us, and there's some obvious technical advantages, but it all comes down to how it sounds at the end of the day. So if, if you like the way it sounds, I, I would love to know. Do we have any idea what the price is going to be on, on these, by the way? Oh, at retail? Oh, God help me. I, I would hate to no, say I'm a number, sure. but it's, it's. I guess like what I can say is it's cheaper than the DE-111. Um, right, so let me look at a cheat sheet here. List price in the U.S. on the current price sheet for the DE111 is 146 bucks, which means the price you'll probably pay online is like 88 bucks. So this is less than that, like I don't know, 75, 80, something like that. That would be great. I mean, if you if you can get it even at a hundred dollars, if you can get it for a hundred dollars and it offers all that, like that's a huge. I mean, what other compression driver are you getting in the hundred dollar range? Um, the yeah. DE250, you know, and that's well, remember that that's the performance of this is comparable to the DE250 in terms of sensitivity, in terms of, I mean, better crossover point in terms of maximum output. Mm. So it's really a 1.4 inch dome and the price of a 1.4 inch dome in Neo that performs like a 1.75 inch dome compression driver. And that's true on the way up. You know, the, the bigger cousin, the DH450 performs like a two inch dome. Uh, it just, uh, lets you lets you go get a lot more performance into a smaller package so hey right. bennett well thank you so much for joining us i really appreciate it um anything else you want to say about bnc otherwise we're going to get off the air uh please continue to buy our products thank you i love having a job <laughs> awesome all right bennett good talking to you thanks again yeah. you too man